weeks ago, Craig Joubert was in charge of the first Rugby World Cup 2015 qualifier between Mexico and Jamaica. A momentous day for those two countries, but for the South African referee, it was a world away from his experience five months earlier. The World Cup is not about 20 teams over seven weeks. It's about 80 teams over four years, you know, and this is, this is the first step in that process. Um, and each game is as important as the next. Um, and certainly my preparation and my dealings on the field with the players will be exactly the same as it was on the 23rd of October last year and exactly the same as it is in any other game that I, that I referee. And so, you know, from that perspective, go out, it's a, it's a test match, you know, test matches are really exciting things to referee, that are privileged to referee and so privileged to be here. Joubert took time out in Mexico to watch some club and university matches and to run a refereeing masterclass for local officials. If you start seeing this picture, inevitably that scrum just collapses on engagement. Once we've, got, once we've got these teams to engage, what becomes really important is the binding here. All right, and firstly and most importantly, tight heads bind. It's very easy for the tight head to bind on the elbow, and it's really easy. In fact, let me, let, let me show, let me, sorry, let me, get, let me get in there and scrum it. Yeah. If I'm the tight head, it's really easy for me to bind here, and then watch how easy this is. All right, so what could you do there when I pulled you down? Did you have any strength? No. No strength at all. So as, as the tight head, it's so easy if I'm binding on the, on the elbow to really collapse that loose head. Every season, I'll try and make sure that I do at least a few um, uh, club games in, in Durban, my home city, um, and then at least a few schoolboy games as well. And, and generally, you know, if I get a weekend off and I'm able to do a schoolboy game, you know, I'll go up at 8 o'clock in the morning and referee an under-14 A game you know, and watch some of the other junior schoolboy referees refereeing. And it's, it's really great to go back to those environments where I was 20 years ago, you know, and go and, um, and I guess give back and, and be able to input to referees, but also input to schoolboy and club rugby in, in, my, own, uh, in my own environment. But it's a long way from an under-14 game to the cauldron of a Rugby World Cup final. A television audience of billions scrutinising every decision in a match that will become part of rugby history. The referees' preparations are as detailed as those of the players. An interesting stat in 2011 was I actually refereed the All Blacks and France three times each prior to the World Cup final in that year, you know. So, you know, I guess I guess I knew the teams uh, relatively well, but, you know, we do do our preparation as well. And so the build-up to that week certainly looked at both their semi-finals and, you know, look at scrums and you look at tactics and stuff like that. And I, I guess the important thing for us is to go and prepare for what you might see, but not to go in with preconceived ideas. Get up and get away. Yes. Richie, can you have that word, please? Richie, I need you to have that word, please. Right. Touch. Pause. Bingo. I think with 17 minutes to go, there was um, the All Blacks got pushed off the own ball at a scrum. And I rightfully gave France a penalty, and you know, as it turned out, Trondouk missed that penalty. And if he'd knocked it over, that could have been the penalty that changed the outcome of the World Cup. And I was telling myself I had to have the courage to continue to make those kind of decisions, and I was quite prepared to make those kind of decisions. By the same time, I also recognised that marginal decisions that change the outcome of the game is not what refereeing is all about, you know. And so, and so, refereeing the clear and obvious is what we spoke about at the World Cup. And, and certainly in the last 10 minutes, I was saying to myself. If a clear and obvious infringement presents itself here, I, I must have the courage to make that decision. And so that was, you know, the, the frame of mind I was in. And, and um, you know, I was pretty comfortable that whatever decision needs to be made, I would have, uh, I would have been comfortable to have made it. 
It was an intense game. It was a good challenge. Um, it was everything I expected, ever expected a World Cup final would be.